So I'm having some problems with my vacuum pump. It won't draw anything lower than 1650 millitors. So I think the veins inside are worn. Uh, this also will give me a good chance to end up cleaning the little sight glass here, which is pretty simple to do. Basically, it's held together with four Allen wrenches, one, two, three, and four down underneath. And I believe those Allen wrenches are going to be a 532nd. So we're going to go ahead and take these off. Uh, the first time you take them off, it can be really tight. Uh, I would suggest you have a replacement O-ring gasket that you can get from the manufacturer, Harvest Right. If you're careful enough, you can probably reuse your gasket as long as it doesn't get uh, nicked or cut or pulled. Okay, the first thing you want to do, you want to go ahead and drain the oil, which I have already done. You want to make sure the switch in the back is turned off and walk around and go ahead and unplug it. You don't want to have it energized as you're working on this piece of equipment. And just to make this a lot easier, I'm going to go ahead and take off this hose. And we're going to put this down on the ground where it's going to be easier to access it. Okay, I have it down on the ground and I have it sitting in a, an old cookie sheet. I use that to uh, catch any oil that I might spill as I'm filling it up just so I don't mess up my floor. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cap this with a little piece of paper towel. I just don't want anything going in there that shouldn't be going in there. Okay, I have removed three of the screws. This is the last screw I need to remove. And as you can see, the thing is about ready to come off all by itself. So I'm going to gently lift this off. And there we go. So that this is the inside of the unit. Has a little bit of oil in there. But uh, not too bad. There's a plate plate right here that can slide out. It's kind of a, a deflection screen that goes up into the air breather. So we're going to slide that out, put that aside. And so you can see that up through in here, this goes up into the filter, into the muffler assembly, and we'll be cleaning all that out. This is an O-ring that you want to be careful with. You don't want to damage it. Uh, if you pull it out, if you stretch it, you're going to be kind of screwed. So you want to just leave it alone and be very nice to it. This is the second time I've cleaned that little sight window. Before you begin, and you're going to be using the sink, make sure you put the strainer in there. The last thing you want to do is drop something down the drain. Uh, this is the second time I've done this, and if you can see, it's really not that dirty. I do have a little bit of crud down in there. Uh, I ran the water to get it really nice and hot. So what we're going to do, we're going to get some Dawn dish liquid, which is really good when it comes to grease. We get some hot water and then spray it in there. I'm just going to let it move around. and let it dissolve some of that grease and stuff. Now, there's a, a baffle plate back in, on the inside of this that doesn't allow you to get directly to the sight glass. And so we're going to just have to use water pressure to clean all that stuff out. So I'm just going to put my little hose sprayer way down inside there. Like I said, this water is uber hot. And as you can see, it's getting pretty clean. Just have a little bit more stuff down there. So I'm just trying to get the jets to go into those baffle plate holes to sweep all the stuff away.
since you can't get to it, it's actually glued into place. Let's see how we look so far. Okay, clean as a whistle. So that's all you can really do. Don't attempt to try to break that out because it is glued, glued in there. You don't want to mess that up. Now, this is a motor assembly. So this is the motor. This right here is the actual vacuum pump. There's four large uh, cap screws that hold the uh, pump onto the motor. And we're going to be taking those off next. This is kind of a, a hybrid unit. Some, uh, some of the fittings are SAE, some are metric. These uh, cap screws are actually a six, a six millimeter cap screw. One of the things you might, might want to do before you start a job like this is take a couple of pictures of it, just as a reference so you know how everything goes back together again. Uh, one of the things of concern I've noted is there's a, a black kind of coating on these bolts and that that could be just normal wear and tear of the uh, veins inside the pump wearing out but it could also be uh, looks a little bit it could be rust and that could be common because there is water that gets trapped inside this definitely looks rusty right here and it could just be from the water that the uh, vacuum pump sucks in during the freeze drying cycle this I guess this is par for the course. Okay, we're going to be real careful and we're going to lift this off and right straight back. So this is the actual pump right here. And it is rusty. It's not the good old uh, color that I would normally expect it. And like I said, it's probably because this has been uh, exposed to uh, the moisture from from vacuum forming not vacuum forming from freeze drying okay so I moved the uh, motor side away now I'm just going to gently tap this to separate the two halves okay so you can see where this is slowly coming apart the problem also with these vacuum pumps is Harvest Right uses so many different models and des designs throughout the years that you'd have to have several videos just showing which one is which one. Okay, I have them separated. There's some dowel pins holding to place how they are to be reassembled. Okay, now. Here's the rotary veins right here. These uh, looks like it's nylon. I thought they were going to be graphite, but these things, as they spin, you can see how they slide in and out, and basically it takes the air that's trapped up inside of here, and this one will come up and push it out the other side. So that thing just sit, sits there and spins, and that what creates the vacuum. This, this is the dual stage. This is probably the second stage, and that's the first stage. Okay, we're going to lift, lift off the rear cover now. Those dowel pins will just slide right on out. So here's the dowel pins. We're just going to put them right back inside where they belong. And here's the primary veins right here and they are, these are also made of nylon and they look in pretty good, good condition both the veins here and the veins here do not look worn and I thought for sure they would be so I need to find out what is causing me not to be able to pull a vacuum these are spring loaded so you can kind of pull them back they're spring loaded so they rub up against this wall but they look in pretty good condition, as you can kind of see. So, it's not a vein problem, so I'm going to have to check some other issues along the way. Now, when reassembling this, 
these machine surfaces are extremely smooth so you need to make sure there's no particulate matter on here on these facing sides that when you uh, put the two halves together it will uh, keep them from joining together so it doesn't end up leaking there's no gaskets here so it has to depend on something extremely smooth being butted up against each other to make a sill I would say if you're going to tackle a part a project like this <clears throat> you got to pretend like it's open heart surgery you want to keep everything clean and in order so that you don't make any mistakes you just observe and just do everything in a logical fashion if that makes any sense I can't find any problems here so I'm gonna have to go on to the uh, actual uh, plumbing inside the freeze dryer and see if I can find any issues there and as you're tightening up this just don't tighten one bolt all the way at the same time you kind of jump back and forth some people refer to it as like a star pattern and although I only have four cap screws I can't do a, a, a true star pattern you can just kind of go back and forth make each one a little bit tighter just don't tighten one all by itself uh, unfortunately I don't have any torque specs for these bolts so I'm just gonna have to guess what they're going to have to be Phil here I'm back again with my vacuum pump problem I've been trying to run a couple of batches of food in my freeze dryer and I keep on getting the message of inadequate vacuum so I took the uh, vacuum pump apart yesterday and found out that my veins were still looking good couldn't find any problems with that so what I've done today is I disconnected my holes from that fitting everyone have, has probably have seen that and I went down and got myself a vacuum gauge and made an adapter so I can put my vacuum gauge onto my vacuum pump now this gauge is it uh, is rated in inches of mercury and I'll explain that in a moment so what we're going to do here if I can hold this at the same time as turning on my pump okay so that's where I am right now I'm going to turn my pump on and I am getting I'm going to let this run just for a while I'm getting 23 inches of mercury 